In this video, we're going to talk about the amendments that are going to allow you to earn yield and borrow against your XRP and other fungible tokens issued on the XRPO. With a lot of anticipation, <laughs> people have been waiting for uh, the capability to be able to earn some yield with their XRP uh, or other, you know, NFTs or issued assets on the XRPO for an extended period of time. People have wanted DeFi protocols to be interoperable with the XRPO. You know, we've, we've looked at hooks. We've looked at the cross-chain bridge. Uh, you've got the EVM side chain. You know, there's obviously a need and a want for the interoperability between uh, the, the fast settlement layer that exists for the XRPO and smart contracts to be able to, you know, facilitate a lot of the more complex financial products that exist today. Uh, with derivatives and swaps and options and and all the other things that exist out there. And then you have to have a way to be able to actually account for all those things on chain. Um, and, and we have that. So between XLS 64, 65, and 66, uh, there is a proposal uh, for those amendments that has been put forth on uh, the XRPO uh, that will allow for that functionality to exist native to the network, which is going to be fantastic. Uh, and again, you know, in previous videos, we've discussed there's some prerequisites and other amendments that do have to be passed before we can actually get to that point. Uh, but once those cornerstones and bedrocks are in place, we should uh, at least be to the point where we can vote on this. Uh, and hopefully we do get the implementation of this. And that's that's when we're really going to see the, the Cambrian explosion that Chris Larson uh, and Ripple has talked about for a long time. Um, for the mass adoption of the XRPO. These functionalities are for large financial institutions to be issuing real-world assets onto them um, and then be able to exchange and use the network to move all the money. What are these amendments? How do they impact you? What does it look like? What's the time frame? All that fun stuff, right? So we, we went over 64 in a previous video. They allow for pseudo accounts, delegation of assets. Uh, the way that it's used in this sense is it actually does some of the accounting work uh, in this environment, uh, which again is absolutely necessary for the on-chain accounting. Um, 65 is the management uh, and the capability to participate in uh, single asset liquidity pools. So, you know, let's, let's say you have a bunch of USD or a bunch of XRP uh, that you want to be able to earn a yield on. Uh, you, again, you could delegate through that pseudo account uh, into the pool. Um, they're going to manage, you know, the representation of those issued assets and the ownership of those that provide liquidity within that ecosystem. Um, you, there's likely going to be broker dealers involved here. You're going to have to have all the certifications and licenses uh, in order to be compliant. They'll have to work those things out. Who's going to have to have what transfer agent license, all those things. Okay. Uh, especially depending on what's being transacted and what the parties involved are. So um, likely, you know, potentially going to have to be qualified purchasers where you have assets north of, of 5 million uh, to, in order to be a pseudo account in order to participate with your clients um, in the pool. Uh, whoever is the manager is probably going to have to have a broker dealer's license. Uh, potentially the people that are even issuing liquidity into the pool are going to have to have a broker dealer license. Um, so a lot of things at play here. Again, a lot to be ironed out, but we're a lot closer than we've ever been. So, um, in most circumstances, I do think that people that are retail that hold these assets are going to have to participate, uh, with a qualified entity, uh, whatever those qualifications are deemed to be in order to be, to be able to participate in these types of, uh, liquidity pools, to be able to earn a yield on their assets. You're going to have to hold again, your assets in qualified custody somewhere, uh, where they can run KYC, AML, OFAC, BIS, accreditation, all the other fun stuff on your accounts. Or, you know, you're gonna have to have your digital identity attached to whatever wallet you're participating um, with into these pools. So uh, in that circumstance, you're not gonna have the insurance. But anyway, irrespective, um, getting ahead of myself, but with the one asset, which will either be XRP or a fungible token that's been issued on the XRPO, fungible things can be, you know, shares of a stock. They could be um, something that you can exchange for something else. So like if you had a $5 bill and you wanted five ones, it's still dollars that you're swapping it for, but it's fungible. That's the definition of fungible. So currencies, uh, anything else that's been tokenized that has fractionalization that you can exchange uh, for the same thing, 
uh, is fungible. You'll be able to put those in the pools. That's what will back the loans. Um, the rates are going to be dependent. Uh, there's going to be off-chain underwriting that goes on uh, in these circumstances uh, that's pulled in through the oracles we talked about before, <laughs> XLS 47D. Um, so again, you know, a lot of these amendments have to be passed before any of this stuff is actually possible. Uh, but it is on the horizon, which is great. So you'll be able to put your assets in the pool, participate through whatever qualified institution or parties that you have to deal with, uh, and then you'll be able to earn a yield, right? And so um, in this pool, uh, the people that are, you know, managing it day to day, I'm sure will have some income off of it again, probably why they have to be a broker dealer or have those other certifications. Uh, and then um, they will loan the assets out uh, after underwriting the risk. Uh, they will do the loan management. They'll take their fees for that. And then they'll pay the people that are providing the liquidity to the pool a yield, right? Um, and depending on what the interest rates are and the arbitrage there, their fees, that could vary wildly. But you will be able to earn a yield uh, on your XRP or the representation of your XRP in those pools and uh, stable coins and other fungible assets on the XRPL. So let's say you had, you know, private equity and it's been tokenized, right? You could probably put it in one of these pools and have that liquidity loaned out where, you know, the loan's managed and there's an interest rate and you're paid something else back, or uh, you could be able to borrow against it. So that, that'll be the really cool thing is a lot of these assets that are more nascent, um, price feeds aren't as established. Uh, as things move on chain, a lot of that will become shored up and you'll be able to underwrite the risk associated with those transactions because you'll get a full visibility uh, through the AMMs on all the transactions across an ecosystem and be able to get a, a standardized price for that asset and then underwrite the risk associated with it so that you can then lend against it in these protocols. And that's going to be more complicated, right? They're going to have to have um, probably algorithms that are built over time uh, by the, the people that do that uh, at the banks or financial institutions to be able to underwrite those risks. Um, that's probably still going to be a manual process for an extended period of time. But you'll be able to do it, which will be great. Because right now, really, it's very niche. Uh, and the interest rates are extremely high on a lot of stu that stuff. So XLS 6060 uh, is actually the lending protocol uh, that allows for this. So 65 is the creation of the pools, what's involved there. And then 66 is the smart contract uh, that allows for the lending and borrowing uh, and the underwriting of the risk and uh, all of that associated with the pool. So... Uh, with those three different amendments um, that have been proposed, super excited uh, for when that comes forth and when we will be able to use uh, this at scale to be able to, you know, earn a yield on the XRP uh, in a safe way, mitigate risk, as well as other issued assets on the XRPL. So hopefully this has been valuable for you. We will see you on the next one.